Hey everyone, it's Diabetic Danica, and I have some really exciting news. So, I am graduating nursing school. Woo! Woo! <laughs> but that's not even the best part. So very soon I am graduating nursing school, but on top of that, I actually have already gotten my first nursing job. That's right, that's right, before nursing school was even over, I was job searching, applying to jobs, touching up my resume, writing cover letters, and I had a couple interviews, and I have nailed down a job. I can't even believe it, it's just a huge relief to know that once I'm done at school, I have a means to pay back my student loans, <laughs> basically, because that's how the world works. Anyway, I'm very relieved to have something lined up, and thankfully I actually have a little gap between when I graduate and when I start my job, so I'll have um, some time to chill and catch up with friends and stuff because I have not had a life in nursing school. Now this first job is not a diabetes educator job, and so I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of explain how somebody becomes a certified diabetes educator because a couple people have asked me to do a video on this and at first I was like, no, 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 I'm going to wait until I'm actually a certified diabetes educator to make the video, but then I was like, that could take a while. <laughs> I know how the process works generally, so I'm just going to talk off of what I know. So this nursing job that I just got is an inpatient pediatric unit. So that means that's when you stay overnight at the hospital. So outpatient is when you come in to see the doctor and you go home. Inpatient, you stay at the hospital. And pediatric, of course, is kids. I want to do, eventually, diabetes education for kids. But let me first go through what is required to be a certified diabetes educator and then I can kind of explain why I'm going the route that I'm going. So I don't know how it is in other countries because obviously I just live in the country I live in, the US, so I'm just going to go through kind of what is required in the US. So I get all of this information from www.ncbde.org and that is the National Certification Board for Diabetes Educators. So if you want to be a diabetes educator, just go to that website it's all the requirements for the US. So basically the number one requirement to become a certified diabetes educator is the field that you are in. So most diabetes educators are either a nurse or a dietitian. So I chose nursing, obviously, um, but there's a lot of dietitians that also are diabetes educators. However, there are also a lot of other ways to become one. So there's so many. They added a lot more um, disciplines, honestly, so you can be a clinical psychologist, a registered nurse, an occupational therapist, an optometrist, a pharmacist, a physical therapist, a physician, or a podiatrist. A lot of things. Or, you can be a dietitian, a dietitian nutritionist, a physician assistant, a clinical exercise professional, a certified exercise physiologist, a clinical exercise professional, a uh, health educator holding active certification, is a master certified health education specialist. Or, they also added, if you have a master's degree in social work, you can become a diabetes educator. So, a lot of ways to go about it, but I will say that most of the jobs that I've seen are for nurses or dietitians. So, dietetics just doesn't really interest me. Um, I took a nutrition class and I just wasn't a big fan, but the human body and how it works, anatomy, physiology, all that stuff really interests me, so I chose nursing. So here's where it gets tricky. Um, after you have that degree, you need two years of experience in that field. So for me, I need to work for two years as a nurse. On top of that, you also need a thousand hours of diabetes education. So this is you giving a patient diabetes education. Additionally, you need 15 hours of continuing education credits. So that is you going to classes either online or at conferences. There's a whole list on their website of what counts. Um, they're just classes to help you continue your education so you're most up to date on the information. And then finally, when you have all those requirements met, you can go take the exam, the certification exam. And the exam costs $350 because all certification exams cost that, I feel like. RN exam is also a high price. And there's 200 questions, it takes four hours, and they only hold it twice a year, so timing could be off. But luckily, if you fail, you can take it as many times as you want. So that's nice. And then once you're certified, you just have to renew your license every five years. Um, I believe probably with some continuing education credits. I'm not sure on the exact amount. So anyway, those are the requirements. If you want to have in-depth look at them, go to that website. But So here's where it gets tricky. When you're a new grad like me, so I'm a brand new nurse, I haven't even taken my RN licensure test yet because I haven't graduated yet. So I'll just tell you within a month I'm going to graduate and take that exam. And so once I'm an RN, I can get a nursing job, right? Ideally, I would be able to get a diabetes educator job right away, right? That would be awesome. But 
Since I'm not a certified diabetes educator yet, I don't meet the requirements, and I have no experience in nursing, like real nursing job, it's extremely difficult. So you can potentially get a diabetes educator job without being certified. That happens for sure. And then that's where you get your hours to work to become certified. But it's hard to get that diabetes educator job without being certified and also no experience. So a lot of the job postings will say like, you don't have to be certified, you have to be working towards being certified, but you know, we need you to have two to four hours of clinical experience in the hospital. So what I found that I was running into is most of the job postings want certified diabetes educators. But to become a certified diabetes educator, you have to have experience diabetes educating, basically, which is not the right way to say it, but whatever. And then if they didn't need you to be certified, they wanted you to have experience. So the way that I'm going about it is I am taking this inpatient pediatric nursing job to get my experience. So that'll cover the requirement for becoming a CDE of the two years of experience, at least two years. I might work there longer. Additionally, that will afford me the opportunity to apply to more diabetes educator jobs because now, although I'm not certified, I have experience in nursing. I'm also hoping to work towards the 1,000 hours of providing diabetes education because in any hospital unit there's a chance that you're going to get a diabetic patient and you might have the opportunity to educate them a little bit and so whatever I manage to scrounge together I'm going to try to count towards my certification but I spoke with my diabetes educator from when I was a kid and she said it's really hard to get those thousand hours you don't really think about how much a thousand hours really is until you have to achieve it so even though her job that she got was fully diabetes education. It took her like basically two years to reach 1,000 hours. So in a job where I'm not even primarily doing diabetes education, it's gonna take a lot longer. But you know, whatever I can do to work towards it is great. So once I have a couple years of experience in nursing, I'm hoping to look around and try to find diabetes education jobs where you don't have to be certified, but I have the experience, so that will help me get in. I'm also considering maybe while I have this nursing job, looking for like part-time work. A lot of the diabetes educator jobs were like casual or part-time and so you can just work some hours so I could get more of those thousand hours of providing education. So minus all the requirements and credentials and qualifications, I also just think it could be very valuable just to have that experience in pediatric nursing for my own knowledge for my later diabetes education because if you think about it, Say you want to work with diabetic patients, right, like I do. Obviously, that patient is not just going to have diabetes. I mean, they might. That might be their only medical problem. But a lot of people have other stuff. They might have asthma. They might have a really intense, like, genetic abnormality. They might have an acute thing going on, like pneumonia or something. And if you don't fully understand those medical situations, then it's going to be harder. So I think that it could be really valuable for me to actually get a lot of experience in pediatric nursing to really broaden my scope and broaden my knowledge about all medical pediatric health related stuff so that I can apply that um, when I become a diabetes educator to really fully understand the whole patient and not just their diabetes. So that is my plan at the moment and that's kind of how I'm going about it. If you live in another country and you're a diabetes educator or you're working towards becoming one and it's different, please let me know in the comments below because I'm kind of curious. Um, but that's how it works in the US as far as I can tell. Um, again, I'll say I haven't become a certified diabetes educator yet, but based on the website, um, that's kind of the steps you have to go through. So there's a lot of different ways to go about it, but this is, this is what I've chosen to do. So I'm super excited to start my new job in nursing but also terrified because you learn a lot in nursing school, but honestly, a lot of it you have to learn there at the job. I heard you learn more in the first six months of nursing at your first job than you do in all of nursing school. So it's gonna be a whirlwind, but I'm very excited. And you know, once you start practicing those skills, you're gonna get better and better at them. Whereas nursing school, you learn it once, you maybe do it once or twice, and then it's hard to kind of keep that skill up. So I'm looking forward to just learning more and getting better at nursing. And with kids too. I just love working with kids. I'm super excited for that part. So thank you guys so much for following me on my journey thus far. Uh, it's been a long road to become a diabetes educator, but I really enjoy making these videos and I think it gives me a nice outlet to talk diabetes um, as I work towards making it my career. And even after it's my career, I'm planning on making the videos 
you know, it's fun. So <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I also haven't plugged my social medias in a while, so they're always in the description, but I have a Facebook page, Diabetic Danica. I have a Twitter and an Instagram, D Marie is me. And I also have a Snapchat where I'm also D Marie is me. I always don't think to Snapchat until I'm like laying in my bed exhausted and then I just am goofy and it's ridiculous. But follow me if you want. I don't know. Um, and I also have a store where I make t-shirts. So check those out if you want to and I'll see you very soon with an all new video. Also, um, I am moving. So this is the last time you'll see this room probably looking this way. Um, I want to start taking everything off the walls and kind of putting stuff away because I have a very short time to get everything out. So take a last look. Say goodbye to the room. Bye, room. You've been so good. And yeah, the background will be different. <laughs> Bye.